Hi, I'm Carlos Zapata, and this video is a very brief summary of my research project on higher IoT science. Hopefully, it'll be enough to illustrate how this project is revealing an unthought frontier of science that is transversal to many disciplines and many research areas. So first of all, let's think about IoT. What is IoT? IoT is a word that is derived from the usual terms in mathematics to describe operations, such as binary operations, ternary relations, etc. So we just take that and ending of the word and make it into a noun. Conceptually, arity is the relational manifestation of numerosity. Now, to explain this, let's consider a particular example of the numerosity 3. So the best way to understand arity 3, uh, or ternarity, is to think of it in a contraposition to cardinality or ordinality, which are very closely related concepts. So imagine that we fix a set of three elements, and so we are going to see them in different instances like this, and we want to think of the, the threeness, the numerosity three, that is common to all these uh, concepts, and, and we want to see what each of the concepts really is looking at. So cardinality is looking at the quantity, is the science of comparisons of quantities. So we're essentially just boxing this amount of, uh, of elements and we are counting them in some sense, just saying this, this is this amount and we can compare it to other families and so on. Ordinality is some kind of sequence in, in, in these elements and arity is a relation in uh, between the elements. It could be sort of a functional relation or uh, an equivalence relation or something like that. Now, the, but the arity that is very, very common in, in current science and mathematics is uh, the arity of two, so binarity. And anything, of course, uh, from uh, code, written text that is sequential, things that involve functions that uh, map from one object to the other, things that involve pairwise graphs with links in, in typical network fashion, um, anything from arithmetic that involve algebraic operations that are binary, indeed our notions of symmetry, like groups and group structures and so on, and all the algebraic notions that derive from them. These are very strongly binary notions. And so what I would like to do here is to present an outline of what ternary science could look like. And for that, I'm going to give you a, a bunch of examples of uh, phenomena that I think will be a minimal to a ternary analysis. So let's begin with biology. So for example, we have uh, potential uh, three-way symbiosis, and for example, lichens it has been documented. Uh, we have the concept of uh, macromolecule function that could be think of uh, could be thought of as ternary. Um, <clears throat> for example, here we have porins, or indeed um, higher uh, configurations of DNA strands. And speaking of DNA, we also have genetics as uh, an example of, for example, several genes manifesting for one single function in the phenotype. So th those could be understood as high arity relations between the genes. Now, if we think of data, we would like to generalize from network style uh, distributions of data to hypergraph uh, style distributions of data. Uh, we could also, for example, generalize the truth values from the binary true and false to, you know, perhaps a third value and sort of break the excluded middle and things like this. Um, and then we would like to move towards uh, distributed computing and frameworks that generalize the input output uh, paradigm, which is a bit difficult to think about, but it is certainly a possibility uh, to explore. Then we can also think of games. For example, we have uh, three player games as a, as a way to generalize the concept of competition. And it's in a way a minimal setting for the phenomenon of diplomacy. Now, for example, we could take uh, uh, the famous uh, DeepMind project with StarCraft and just generalize it to uh, the same competition framework, but now with uh, uh, three player free for all games between the uh, AI agents. And of course, in games, we also have good examples of just game mechanics that involve uh, a, a numerosity three in some fundamental way, like in rock, paper, scissors. So if we think of physics, of course, we have a very famous example of a, ter a ternary uh, situation, which is uh, the three body problem. And although they are believed to uh, interact in pairwise manner, it is possible that uh, a ternary, fundamentally ternary description might give a much more uh, tractable uh, uh, formal problem to solve. And uh, there is indeed evidence from nuclear physics, both, both at the level of nuclei and at the level of quarks, uh, that, the, that there are some ternary interactions that cannot be uh, boiled down to a binary pairwise interactions. And then another example from physics could be uh, something to do with metrology, the way, the way in which uh, different measurements could be uh, fundamentally bound by a ternary relation. So for example, we have this protractor here to represent the Euler angles of a three-dimensional 
object in, in space, a rigid body in space. So these three measurements only really make sense when taken in, in, in the trio, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a trio. So we could think in, in that direction as well. Now, think in terms of uh, cognition and neuroscience and maybe perception. We have a few very interesting examples. So we, for example, for example have color. The human perception of color is uh, interesting because we could think of the phenomenon of whiteness as an emerging phenomenon from a fundamentally uh, uh, ternary set of uh, basic colors, So, uh, as, as we are aware. Now, we could also think of neural networks or neural-like networks, uh, for example, this most line that have higher topology in their anatomy so that perhaps uh, other kinds of information uh, can be processed or, or the processing is more efficient or, or more specialized in some sense. Um, so there's, there's that possibility also related to the, to the data that we presented before uh, and from generalizing from networks to hypergraph networks and things like that. And then there's a very clear example with human beings and social, social animals in general. Uh, of uh, cognitive development in uh, low numbers of individuals. Um, so it, when you have a group of small uh, number of individuals, it might be that there are some cognitive faculties that are particularly adapted to that, that number of, of, uh, of members in, in small groups. So this is uh, another avenue of potential research. And then all these phenomena uh, will hopefully will be modeled by a form of ternary mathematics, of which we have a lot of evidence and there is some literature on, on, on these topics already. So for example, we have the ternary analog of matrices, which are typically called cubic matrices, which are um, three or three uh, scalar arrays in, in three dimensions, right? So it's uh, um, the equivalent to a matrix, but in like, a, like a Rubik's cube here. And we also have topology, many examples from topology. So uh, we have the famous Borromean rings, which are, which are uh, an arrangement of links that uh, is bound uh, in a fundamentally ternary way because once one of the links is removed, the, the other remaining two are unlinked. And uh, we have ternary relations, which are the direct generalization of binary relations or functions, and they can be composed and they can be uh, thought of in, in entirely uh, similar ways, but now, Compositions are ternary and they involve uh, more possibilities and, and sort of the topology of compositions uh, really grows. So the hope is that these mathematics will have something to say uh, in modeling all this phenomena that we've, that we've presented before. And I'd like to close with a quote that I think captures perfectly the spirit of this high RIT science project. So this is attributed to Orwin Schrodinger and says, the task is not to see what has never been seen before, but to think what has never been thought before about what we see every day.